From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hi, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode, we Zoom with singer-songwriter Devin Dawson. What a week it was for Devin. Had just released a new EP entitled Pink Slip and was getting set to play the Grand Ole Opry for the first time in over a year. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Devin Dawson. Welcome back to Coffee Country and Cody, WSM Radio and Circle Television all over the world this morning. He loved her. Devin, Devin Dawson. Good to see you again, buddy. What's going Thanks on, you. man? Yeah, it's hey, good Devin. to see you guys too. Hey, all. Hey, everybody. The, you guys uh, got this process down, man. You guys do this really well. I love it. It's awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's nice of you to say. We can thank Joel Wilson and Eric Markham in Master Control and our studio director. <laughs> man behind the scenes. Yeah, I... uh I, I was laughing off the air because uh, Megan said, <laughs> hey, Devin, are you in California? Which is where Devin's from originally. Uh, how early is it? And Devin said, no, I'm in Nashville, but it's still early for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all get up at like 3.30 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Charlie, you Bill get and Charlie do. ridiculously early. I mean, I get up early enough, you know, now that I'm working from home, I can sleep in a little bit. But I'm not even Charlie. in bed by that time sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Charlie's one of those two two thirty guys, aren't you, Charlie? 245, somewhere along in there? Oh, my alarm actually rings at 147. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know. That's just, you can't function. I don't know how you do it, Charlie. Bless yeah. this man. Bless this man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. It's it's 2017. Let's go back to a better time. Life was quite normal in the music <laughs> business, or as normal as a music business life is. Yeah. It was November of 2017. What was significant that month, that year in your life? Um, do you have an answer for me? Am I, I do have an answer. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I want to say I want to say maybe All on Me came out, maybe or something. I don't know. Remind you me. You made your Grand Ole Opry debut oh, in November okay. yeah. of 2017, and you're coming back this weekend. We are very excited to have you. And guess what, Kevin? Kevin he likes in. to do this. He likes to quiz you about yourself. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, <laughs> like not fair. I haven't done much studying up on myself recently. <laughs> <laughs> honestly that day was crazy because we had just played uh i think we played either jimmy fallon or seth myers the, the night the day of or something right or the night before and we had to do stuff the morning of anyway so we were flying no sorry it was the night before and we were flying in the morning of and our flight got delayed like eight hours and there was no oh. other flights out of there and they were like do you want to cancel this and do it another time and i was like up until the point where I don't make my my curtain call, we're not canceling it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I literally like we we were delayed seven hours, and I we flew finally. We got in there. My manager picked me up in his jeep from the airport. I had my guitar. I had the same clothes on, and I literally walked on stage from the jeep in the parking lot and played my song with the band. <laughs> I didn't even rehearse. It was. Oh, man, as, as if there's not enough, like, nervousness and stress just playing the Opry for the first time, I guess that kind of had to make it full tilt for me. But <laughs> something I will never forget until you quiz me, then I'll forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So have you uh, ever spent any time around Kebmo, who is just the king of cool to me? He just exudes this peace and tranquility when you're around the guy. You just want more cab mode. Do you know we have? Yeah, been- um, I actually haven't met him yet. Um, and so I know we're trying to keep it pretty close to the chest as far as, um, you know, hanging with people goes, especially mm-hmm. at the Opry right now. But if, if I get a chance to fist bump him or something, I'd love to talk to him. But um, I've been a fan for a while. I mean, his style of blues that he does and that kind of soulfulness that he has is – it's just I've never heard anything like it. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to share the stage with him. It's going to be fun. And uh, also this weekend, as a part of the Opry, you uh, share the stage. I was looking at the lineup for the television portion with Zach Williams, who's just come off that big, big hit with Dolly Parton. There was That's Jesus. Right. 
and uh, Maggie Rose is going to be in, mm -hmm. and, and you will be in that television portion. Maggie yeah, it's been a second since I've been to the Opry. Um, obviously, with just things happening this year, and I think even the Opry trying to figure out how they're going to keep the circle unbroken, you know, and they have, and it's been really, really inspiring to see all the efforts they made, and while still staying, staying safe and doing all that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just really honored to be back. It's been maybe – man, I want to say close to a year probably. And um, I usually go up and do just acoustic solo or I just bring an electric solo, but I really wanted to play with the band this time because I missed them. So I'm going to, I'm going to jam out with the guys this time. It's going to be fun. Devin, you've had some big hits, obviously God's country. We spoke with you about that a, a couple months ago and, but how does it feel to be doing your own stuff now and uh, oh, the man. pink slip and it's gotta yeah. be a great moment. It is. It's funny. Um, I did this interview you know, around the album stuff. I can't remember who it was, but somebody's question was like, you're finally making a comeback. And I was like, I didn't even know I was away. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, is it really a comeback? But I guess it has really been that long, you know, since Dark Horse came out. And um, obviously there's a bunch of factors that go into like how and when we release new music. Um, one of the small factors was just, I was working with a guy named Jay Joyce and his process creatively is to, do it all at once. It's not like we're going to do one song and one single and put it out and then work on the rest of the album. Mm -hmm. He wants to do it all at once and make it a moment. And I, and I appreciate that because it gives this, this record like a very unique fingerprint and a timestamp. Um, but it also is hard to wait that long. And I write every single day. I've written five, six, 700 songs since Dark Horse came out, you know? So oh, wow. it's the best feeling in the world to finally have new music out and just like this cathartic thing of like, okay, it's out there. You can have it. It's yours now. It's no longer just mine. Um, and I missed that feeling. And it's been a really good week. Um, and it's been received really well. And yeah, it's just, I, I'm, it's good to be back, baby. You know? <laughs> so as a songwriter versus a writer of novels, let's say, often mm -hmm. people who write novels, you will interview them and they will say, it is better to have written than to write. Correct. What is it like for a songwriter? Is that kind of the same way for you guys? I mean, it's such a burden until you get it out of your system. Yeah, I think um, there's two things. So I've, I was actually, I've re recently written or read um, Stephen King's novel or book called On Writing, which is kind of part memoir, part like this is how I'm trying to make sense of what I do. And, and it's right. Like you still have to have your station, your safe place, and you should probably spend some amount of time every day doing it. Right. Um, but not every song that we write is going to be great. But if you don't get get those not so good ones out, like, you know, you're not going to be able to get to the great ones because you can't reinvent the wheel every single day. And to me, that that is part of a huge part of what greatness is to me is doing something that's never been done before, but doing it on a level that everyone can relate to. You know what I mean? And that's really hard. And that's the kind of stuff I need for a song for myself. But then there's times where you just feel that inspiration and you have an idea and you just go into a trance and you just don't look up until the song is done. And I think that's kind of what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I could, if I could have that every day, uh, I would be a very rich man, but um, it happens you, maybe once or twice a month. I'm not going to lie. You, know? <laughs> you said when you leave us, you, you got a, uh, a golf outing scheduled. Yes. Are, are you writing with other songwriters or golfing with other songwriters? Yeah, I'm going to golf with uh, Brad Tercy and Trevor Rosen from uh, Old Dominion. And then um, Ernest, Ern, Ern, Ernest Key Smith, he's got like 10 million names, but he's got a bunch of songs on Morgan Wallen's album. And he's also an artist and, and an incredible singer in his own right. But I'm not sure we'll actually like bring a guitar into the golf cart or anything. But, um, but you know, I bet you I write a couple things down that someone says today. You know what I mean? And that's part of it. So well, I'm just saying, like, that's the, you know, it's a good life that, that I live. I'm very grateful. Fog, who's the best rain, golfer? and 42. It's like the British Open, huh? Exactly. <laughs> um, who's the best? Um, I think Brad Tercy probably inches me out a little bit. Um, him and I are pretty close. Sometimes we'll shoot like really, you know, really high 70s, low 80s, and then other times I'm like wow. in the 90s. I, and, yeah. and with Ernest there, I'm guessing I'm going to have a six-pack at like 10 a.m. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a yeah. day. That sounds fun. And, yeah, and it's going to be good. I'm quickly, for a California guy, did you not get married to Leah at the Carnton Plantation, the historic Carnton Plantation in Franklin? Yeah, I did. Um, 100% I did. And, uh, 
you know, I tried to stay out a little bit of the uh, of the planning and all that. And actually, we were really lucky because um, my sister in law, Leah's sister, is actually a professional wedding planner, and so it worked out really well. Um, and I, you know, I think they knew what I wanted. I wanted as much black in the wedding as absolutely possible, <laughs> and so I just, you know, they knew that I got black plates. It was really cool. They actually looked really good. Um, but yeah, we got married there about a year and a half ago, um, and it was a really beautiful place. So. Wow. This is Devin Dawson, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to give uh, from the new EP, The Pink Slip, which is out now with a new single, He Loved Her, that we started with that. We're going to wrap up with a little bit of, uh, what was the song you said was out streaming everything else off the Yeah, EP? I would love for you guys to play a clip of a song called Whatever Forever Is. It's kind of like my way of tricking people into a wedding song without it being like a 6-8 ballad, you know? Somewhere there's a, there's a groom saying, Hey, I told you black was cool for weddings. Listening to Devin Dawson, who's on his way to the stage at the Grand Ole Opry Saturday night. Thank you so much for your time. Always good to talk to you guys this evening. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Matos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.